welcome to the Marine Channel from the Dusseldorf Boat Show. I've got a really special boat to show you now. This is the Omicron OT60. This is hull number one. It's been so popular, they've already sold the next four. So we're up to hull number five, which is sold. It's designed to be super efficient. It's a light boat. This boat is six meters wide. It's a 60 foot boat. It weighs less than 20 tons. Everything about it is aimed at efficiency. So the hull is Vine Lester, but the superstructure is all carbon fiber to reduce weight and reduce weight at that height to avoid uh, for stability. So let's start on this amazing bathing platform. It's a huge platform, as you can see. It is designed to take uh, a rib of well over four meters. Um, it's got some really neat features uh, and I'm going to show you this one which absolutely uh, I loved. This part of the aft deck here is actually the passerelle. So you can see here there's a divide and it swings out from here, will swing back onto the dock but it also swings at more than a right angle. So if you are moored alongside, it will actually swing right out here and you can get onto the dock if you were side on. So the, the boat has great space. Um, these aren't lockers, by the way, that's access to the steering. However, these are lockers. So you've got a nice bit of storage in there. And just lovely access. So let's go up the steps here. So you come to this amazing cockpit, which is vast. So let's just look at this passerelle again. So you can see here where it divides. So that would swing out. Now, if you're going to be using that long term, there are poles that slot in here and you can put a new rail up for safety. So you're not left with that kind of open gap. Under here, we have a griddle. So this is kind of almost hanging off the back of the boat, a bit like a sailing boat. Now there's going to be quite a few analogies to sailing boats because the guys that built this are all sailors and there's a lot uh, of similarities between this and a sailing boat. So if we look at the seating here, we've got two large dining areas. Now that one at the moment is configured as a sun pad and that one has still got the table up. So that one can drop down and you can have two large sun pads. Their thinking with this is, Normally, with the, uh, the seating, you sit at the back here, looking into the boat. Why would you want to do that? So here, you can sit down here and look at that amazing view that is at the back of the boat there. Right, I'm going to have a little wander around before going inside. So if I just look under here, we've got a nice little storage locker. And if I look at the corresponding one on the other side, we have another helm station for stern two mooring obviously and sitting here you couldn't have a better view of where you're parking so let's walk around the decks first thing that strikes you is the width of the decks absolutely enormous well I'll see that hatch from below in a while let's just go along here and we come to this massive foredeck which is all flat and plenty of space up here, but you do have that massive sun pad. And also, you have another ladder up to another sun pad up on the top there. Now this ladder is really clever because it lifts out of here and drops into the side bulwark over there. And if you're moored side two, it's your ladder to get on and off. Let's just have a look over here at the anchor gear. Now, this boat has a bowsprit with the anchor on and everything about this boat is about reliability, functionality and just being rugged. So the builder's view on this was that they could have had one of those really fancy systems where the whole anchor retracts back into the boat but they figure that if that's caught out in a big blow, it's not gonna be sturdy enough. So they've gone for this rather rugged um, alternative. And under there, you've got two huge cleats and a windlass. So as I say, everything about reliability and functionality. Let's just wander back 
and take you inside the boat because it is something special. Come down and join me in the engine room. Right, I'm going to give you the full tour around the engine room, but first I want to tell you about these engines because you might be looking at these and thinking, God, they look small. Is that a wing engine or a generator engine? No, this boat is not about speed. It's about economy. So these are twin Yanmar 250 horsepower engines. There's actually an option for a smaller engine, but everybody has spec the 250 so far. So these engines are designed for economy. The boat's designed for economy. It has a range of a thousand miles. At eight knots, it will do 1.25 litres a mile at 10 knots, one and a half litres a mile. So let's have a look around and just take in what we've got here. The quality of the installation is amazing. Now this is a really interesting feature. So here we've got lots of switch gear and solenoids, but the thinking behind this Perspix panel is there are holes for anything that they think you should be touching or you should want to touch or need to touch. So all the little switches, the resets, but anything else, so stuff behind here, is electricians only. So you're not to be going there, so it's covered up. So we can just have a quick look round. We've got a Jenny here, Whisper Jen. Over here we've got the other Yanmar. We've got a large inverter, we've got fuel filters. And there's a lot of redundancy on this boat. There is two of a lot of things, like fresh water pumps. Let's just go around here and see what we can see around here. We were talking to the CEO and he was telling me that it's a totally dry boat as well. So it has a huge scavenger um, bilge pump in the deepest part of the boat, but it also then has a micro pipe that will take out literally the last bits of water. So everything is always totally dry. It's really quite special. And really nicely insulated for sound. Right, let's go inside. All right, let's go in. So the saloon, and there's a really interesting theory about this saloon. It's designed to cope with wet people. So everything about it is waterproof. We've got the fabric here, which is waterproof. Even the fabric on this seating is waterproof. But what does strike you here is the amazing 360 view. Because it's got very large windows. That's a pop-up TV, so that would be down. If we just look in here, we've got Some great storage in here. This owner actually has a printer on board for when he's working. And again in there we have a fridge, handy to keep your drinks cool. But it's a beautiful feel and very good headroom. I'm six foot two and there's a good eight inches above me. And the number of opening windows, we've got these two huge panels at the back. We've got one, two opening up there. We've got a side one there, and also a side one there. And onto the helm. So it's quite a simple helm, which is great. And you've got all your main controls here. So we've got our throttles, we've got all our switch gear, we've got our bow thruster, we've got our engine management, we've got our fusion, that essential thing. Um, but what else we've also got is two large screens. You can see that one at the moment is set on the engine room camera and this one controls all your systems. So if I go to lighting, I can turn on all my cabin lights, I can turn my exterior lights on, I can turn on my, I don't know, aft ceiling spotlights. If I go to navigation, I've got all my autopilot, my steering pump, my passerelle, my thrusters, my windlass, all the main controls there. And if I go to that one, now this is my digital fuses. So on there is all my uh, fuse system, my breakers for all these items, lights, anchor lights, steering pumps, all that sort of stuff. 
and everything here has a backup, so it has a redundancy. So let's take the engines, for instance. So in here, if that fails for my engines, I've got a manual switch over. I've got a manual switch over for fresh water pump. I've got a manual switch over for the steering pump. So there's just a whole load of redundancy built in, just in case that goes wrong. Let's come down here because this is quite special. Right, I'm just gonna have to pan up here because it's a bit like being in a cathedral. It is vast and epically light. Those massive windows just flood light down here. Let's start over here with this dining area. Now this table actually will drop and become another double berth if you need it, although it's not short of berths. But it's quite a cosy place to be down here and you've got that great hole window out there. So you've got a fab view while you're eating. You're not just tucked down below and you've lost your view. Now, the galley. This really is like your kitchen at home. Let's have a quick look through. So what we strike us is twin taps. And because these guys are sailors, this one is actually seawater. So you've got a seawater and a fresh water. So you're not draining those tanks if you're doing something that doesn't need fresh water. Loads of storage. I'm just going to go through these because if I look in there, we've got a little dishwasher. Here, plenty of storage under the sink. Under there, more storage. We have a Miele induction hob. That's its extractor, oven down there, and this is a neat little feature. Corner of work surfaces in a galley often get just wasted, so a really nice bin in there. And that's a lovely great sink in there. If I open this up, here again we have a full-size Miele fridge, and this has ice making facility, so if you fill that with water it will fill that top tray with ice. So really quite something. If I just open that one, just look at the, the quality of everything here. Just beautiful. But I think working in this galley would be just a total pleasure. It really would be. You've got loads of view. You can see out everywhere. You're not going to feel isolated because your guests are sitting over there. Now I'm going to start in terms of the sleeping areas in this. Now this is what they are designating as the master cabin. I'm not sure about that but we'll come to that in a second. So lovely light airy cabin. I'm going to count the windows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten windows. So this is not a dull place. Hang on, I missed one. Eleven plenty of light but also importantly plenty of ventilation so you've got lots of opening ports top and side let's have a look at our storage so nice hanging in there down here more storage a little kind of almost sofa i suppose but certainly a nice seat by the bedside we've got switching uh, looks like a fusion controller there, little cubby hole for all your knickknacks. Same the other side. This is a little kind of stool here, so I guess that's a dressing area. Nice shelving and a built-in flat screen there. So this is a really nice cabin. In here we have an ensuite. So we've got a nice Tecma loo there. We've got plenty of storage above and below and really nice fittings the taps i just love not your normal sort of chrome ones and up there we've got a light and ventilation now you're all saying but it hasn't got a shower <laughs> it hasn't got a shower here we go look at that a huge walk-in shower again you've got light and ventilation coming in there Lovely great cupboard there, 
and a seat with storage under. So that is a really luxurious shower. Right, I'm going to go into what is the smallest cabin. And it's all relative because it really isn't small. So it's a twin. So we've got a single down there and we've got a single there that is much wider than a normal single. And the quality on this boat is just fabulous. We've got plenty of storage, plenty of headroom. We've got lights up there. We've got a hull window down there so you can lie in bed and look out. And in here, we've got the ensuite for what is this smallest bedroom, cabin. And again, it's not much behind the main one. Lovely great walk-in shower. And really special. Okay, let's go and look at what they're designating as the second cabin. I think if this was my boat, it would be the master, because this is fabulous. So it's a double, but it actually goes across the boat. So as you're lying in bed, you've got that hull window there. I'm going to put the camera where your head would be. That's your view as you wake up or go to bed. Just amazing. Also, you've got another light up there and you've got a hatch and that's the hatch that we walked over on the deck outside. So you've got good storage again, hanging in there. You've got a little cupboard down there. You've got a couple of cupboards under the bed. You've got what could be, I guess, a sort of dressing table, but again, good storage in there. And plenty of floor space. You're not just Jumping into bed, you've got plenty of room to get dressed and undressed. Let's have a look in here because this is your ensuite. And it is large. Again, you've got that natural light coming from up there. You've got mirrors, you've got loads of storage. You've got the Tecmo Lou again. And you've got a big walk in shower. Now the only, I guess, downside is that this doubles up as the day heads as well. But it's another fabulous ensuite for this cabin. And interestingly, they do do a version where the forward cabin can be split into two to make a four cabin boat, in which case obviously this does become the master cabin. But quite, quite amazing. Well, what a special boat, and isn't it something different? I really wasn't expecting this. It's a real sailor's boat, I guess. It's about practicality, redundancy, safety, economy. Um, the guys have just created something very special. The whole area down below, I think, is just superb. I have never seen anything like it before. The quality is superb. You're going to ask me about price. The answer is, for the basic boat, basic price is 1.64 million. That is expat, but that's got everything you need to sail away. You don't need to buy any extras um, to actually get going. This boat has quite a few extras. This price is 1.9 million, so a little bit more, um, but it really is a stunning boat. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do subscribe to our channel. Hit that alarm bell as well, so that we can let you know when we get any new videos coming up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.